Hey everybody, this is my 12-minute character build for Pathfinder 2E. This isn't to prove that I can build a character faster than anybody else. It's about getting new people into the hobby. Anyway, I've seen people introduce friends to Pathfinder, and the character build can take hours, and when it's all over, there's no time or interest to actually play the game. Your first character build should only take in my opinion, a quarter of an hour, so you can maximize the time that you actually spend playing. You can always revise your build later between sessions. Here's how I have new players create their first new character, and luckily, Pathfinder 2E makes it shockingly easy to do a quick build. I start players out on page 23. It gives a nice one-sentence summary of each ancestry, in case someone's never heard of an elf or isn't sure what a friendly goblin might look like, it, it also gives them a good overview of the classes. Let your new player look over this so that they can figure out who they're going to be and what they're going to be doing in the game. Once they've made their choice, it's just ABC. Ancestry, background, and class in that order. Ancestries starts on page 34, and each ancestry has a sidebar on the right side of the book with all the information you need for a character sheet. Let's say someone wants to play an elf. That's a pretty common ancestry for a new player. Uh, hit points are six. Now, that'll go up later uh, based on the class that they choose, but for now, jot, jot down six. Size is medium. We don't really need to track that in my experience. And then speed 30. Ability boosts. This is one of the coolest things about Pathfinder 2e. You don't have to roll for ability scores if you don't want to. If, if a player has heard about the, the mythos of rolling dice to build a character, then let them if they want to. But you don't have to, and it's quicker if you don't. What you can do instead is start all your abilities out at 10, and then you take ability boosts and ability flaws as you build your character. So boosts are worth two points and flaws are worth negative two points. Elves get a boost, it says, to dexterity and intelligence. So I'm going to put a two by dex, a two by int, just to, so that we remember it for, for later. And it also gets one free boost. So you can assign that to any ability you want. I'll put it by charisma. Constitution is an ability flaw, though, so I'll take a negative two to that. Elves also have low light vision, so I'll write that under perception. Each ancestry has a heritage option, so let your player look over those. They're, they're very short. I'll choose an arctic elf, which grants cold resistance equal to half my level with a minimum of one, so it's one, and I'll just write that under the health section here, the hit point section. Now choose an ancestry feat. I think I'll take Elven Weapon Familiarity to get training with Elven Weapons. Okay, that's it. That's Ancestry. On to the backgrounds. Backgrounds are listed on page 60. Let your player look over them. They're only a paragraph each or so, and then see what kind of benefits they provide. I'll choose Fortune Teller. That's a fun one. It gets two ability boosts, one to Int and or, or Charisma, and one as a free boost. I'll assign one to Charisma, and so that's four going into charisma now, uh, and one for constitution to cancel out that flaw. It also grants us training in occultism and lore fortune telling. So I'll mark that on skills. I'll fill in the T for training by lore and by occultism. Pathfinder 2E has the concept of training levels, which governs proficiency. There's Trained, Expertise, Mastery, and Legendary. So if you mark T for a skill, that translates to a plus two proficiency bonus. E for Expertise gets four, Mastery gets six, Legendary gets eight. I'm marking Occultism and Lore Fortune Teller as T and notating a plus two proficiency for each. That's it for backgrounds. Now on to class. Classes are listed on page 69. There's a description of each class and, more importantly, the page number where you'll find that class. I've already done a quick build for a rogue in 5e, so this time I'll assume my new player chooses a bard, because quick builds can be for magic users, too. Bard is page 94, and just like in the Ancestry section, there's a list of all the essential information for your character sheet on the right and in the highlighted table at the top. So first of all, the key ability is Charisma. That, that'll be important later, especially for the character's spell DC. For now, I'll just put a little star by Charisma so I remember that it's important. 
after my player has chosen their class, but before I help them fill in the character sheet, I like to resolve ability scores. You get to choose four more boosts to ability scores in addition to all the ones that you've already taken. So I'm going to go through, because now I know I'm that they're going to play a bard, so uh, charisma is their key ability I've got marked down. So let's boost that up to 16. Let's boost wisdom up to 12, so that's two boosts so far. Let's boost constitution up again to 12. And then uh, let's boost dexterity up to 14, because they're going to need a little bit of help with combat. Now, of course, we can translate these into modifiers, and for that you can show your player the table on page 20, or just explain that for every even score above 10, you get one modifier bonus. So that's 0 for 10 or 11, and 1 for 12, 2 for 14, 3 for 16. Your class grants you more hit points, too. So for the bard, it's 8 plus your constitution modifier, so that's 6 for, for elves, 8 plus 2 for this particular build, no, sorry, 8 plus 1 for this particular build, for a total of 15. So I'll write that in the hit point slot. Classes also provide a bunch of proficiency bonuses. I'll mark perception as E, and add a T for fortitude and reflex, E for will saves, remember that's Two for T, or trained, and four for expert. Bards get training in occultism, but I already have that from my background as a fortune teller. At first level, and only at first level, you get to pick another skill to be trained in when something gets duplicated. So I'll take Arcana, because that seems vaguely related. So I'll put T for performance, and then, so I get to take five different skills. 4 plus my intelligence modifier in addition. So I've got a 1 for intelligence. I'll take diplomacy, deception, society, thievery. Attacks and defenses are good to know, but I'm going to show you a trick that allows us to kind of breeze past that during this initial build. Bards cast occult magic, so they're trained in occult spell attacks and in occult spell DCs. So I'll mark T for the spell DC, and while I'm here, I can fill in the key attribute. So now we know our spell DC, and our spell attack, incidentally. Take a look at the class table, because that summarizes the benefits at each level. We already have an ancestry and background, we took our initial proficiency, so really, we just need to take some spells and find a muse. There are a few muses to choose from, and most classes have these kinds of extra benefits at first level. So let your player read through whatever they are and choose one. I'll take Polymath because it gives a versatile performance feat and the Unseen Servant spell. To choose spells, the first stop is the spell chart on the next page in this case. It looks like bards get five cantrips and two first level spells. Spells are listed on page 307, and they're really nicely organized by magic tradition. Bards, like I said, are occult casters, so that's on page 311. You can let your player choose their five cantrips and two spells, or tell them they can choose during their first session as you play. This lets them choose spells that are useful, and it gives them more time to think about it. Some players do better with limited choices, though, at least at first. So you might ask your player whether they'd just like you to choose some good spells for them with the option to swap those spells out for free after the game is over and they've had more of a chance to go home and review the, the spell listings. Once your spells have been chosen, flip back to page 289. This is a gold mine. It's starting equipment for each class. This saves so much time. Give the player the items listed for bards and you don't have to worry about whether they can use the gear they buy. Bards are proficient with everything in this class kit. The, the one minor problem with this method is that these may not be the best weapons for that specific build. So for instance, I'm building an, an elf with elven weapon familiarity, but the bard kit gives me a sling instead of, say, a bow. All the kits are built with a little wiggle room, though, and anyway, what's a few gold pieces among friends? You can shortchange them on their first quest if it makes you feel better. I'll gift this player a short bow in exchange for the sling. 
And that's it. I know you're thinking, well, what about initiative? Well, that's just perception in 2E, so that's already done. But what about AC or weapon damage types and those other details? Well, deal with those as they come up. You don't really need to know your AC until your first combat. So during the first combat of the game, something will try to hit this new character, and suddenly the player will need to know what AC is and how to find it on their character sheet. So just take a moment during combat, you can help them calculate their AC then, and it's also written on the character sheet pretty clearly, so I mean it's 10 plus dex plus any other additional modifiers. Because it's relevant to them in that moment, I find that it usually helps them sort of internalize that number and the meaning of that number. Same goes for damage die for their weapon and their feet, what their feats let them do. Keep in mind that for a new player, all of this is new. Less is more, at least during their first game session. With what you have now, you're ready to start playing, and once they've discovered how fun and addictive the game is, they're more likely to go home, sit down, read through the core rule book, and complete their character sheets. This method has worked pretty well for me, so next time you introduce somebody to Pathfinder 2E, Give this method a try. Thanks for watching.